Shalom. Call Hello, Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers that are doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth amongst the heathen nations that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwath that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson. And um, this video is a, a video that one of my subscribers posted. And uh, I have to start writing this stuff down so I can remember to give people plugs. So, salakia so to you brother um, that I didn't uh, do that. But uh, I checked the video out, and, uh, and and it was one of those videos where the spirit was like, yes, respond. You know, we have to correct lies. So basically, this video is a, a, a guy from, from England or Scotland, one or the other. And uh, he's basically revealing the fact that the royal family is a fraud, which we all know that. We know they're not the royals, all right? A lot of people know that, but, you know, the media is controlled by you-know-who, and they're plugged with those people and even a part of those people. So that's what it is. And then he then he uses uh, another video, to a woman that comes up with all this evidence to prove who the actual king of Ireland, Scotland, United Kingdom, etc. is. And uh, she exposes that it's another Edomite. And it's almost laughable because it's like you're not the original inhabitants of that land. I'm holding before me the uh, the Negro question part four, which shows you all the Negro kings of England, Scotland, and Ireland, and the evidences and the proof scientifically, and uh, the different uh, um, what do you call the people that dig up things? Uh, paleontologists, uh, I, I believe, or I think they dig up dinosaurs. But it, nevertheless, the people who excavated the the land. Um, and dug up all the bodies and proved that the inhabitants were uh, dark, melanated people uh, with curly or bushy hair. All right. So uh, without any further ado, let's let him go and say what he has to say. And then I'm going to bring out some scriptures and some information to, to back up what I'm saying. All right. Because that's what we do here at, at the Great Millstone. So here we go. In case you've been living under a rock. Or you just listen to the mainstream media on the television. I have a little something to share with you. You might be surprised that the whole royal family is a total fake. Welcome to the new king of England. All right. So he says the whole royal family is a total fake. All right. So let's go straight to the two minute, like, uh, well, 49, but I'll start here at 39. Okay, so here we go. The queen is illegitimate conception stemming from the illegitimate conception of King George V, who was her father, actually, the Tsar Alexander of Russia was the father of Queen Elizabeth. So, I read this, I thought it was funny. Queen Elizabeth is struck with a black one and her royal titles are null and void. So I'm like, how did they How did they get to this? Well, let me break that. And then why hasn't this made the mainstream media? And then you wonder why Harry, uh, about maybe four or five months back, uh, about that time, maybe around the beginning of the year, denounced his royal, uh, uh, you know, say he denounced his royalty. And he's separated from them because, you know, he knows that they're not the real royals and the things and, and you haven't heard much from them. So this COVID really was used to cover up and hide a lot of things. You know, a lot of that that piece of gate uh, backlash, a lot of these, you know, celebrities that were caught up with pedophilia, all this different stuff. COVID did a good job at shutting down Hollywood. And it seems like it also covered up this scandal that's going on with the uh, with the so-called royal family. Cut down for you folks. Let me tell you what I found. You are gonna crap your oh okay, I found out 
that we have been secretly hidden from the true king because this is what happened through I'll go to this here through all of these documents which you can find on the king.com it breaks down the lineage okay what it basically boils down to is says that Queen Anne Boleyn's avoided her uh, 1536 execution in the Tower of London they did not she didn't die she did not die you people okay Queen Anne Boleyn's grandson, Sir Walter Raleigh, was born with the title of Christ and earned the title of Christ in July 1596-1609-1610. You heard me right. Christ. Guess who that leads to? Joseph Gregory Hallett was born on Rash Hush. I'm going to screw that up. I'll let you read it. Christ, Messiah, pulled from the sword, the stone, joined kingdoms, joined times, reinvigorating England's royal, royal holy grail lineage, Christian mystery lineage inherited the title of christ off his great ten times grandfather walter raleigh certifying title of christ therefore automatically king of england and one thing that these these edomites do when you go all the way back to the time of rome and greece all throughout the maccabees they were always fighting to try and usurp and overthrow uh one another but what she's not what she's not bringing out is that this Joseph Gregory Hallett person is an Edomite and not of the royal line of, of, of King James and, you know, not of not of English, Scotland or Irish descent, not a, 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 a Anglo-Saxon, which basically means angelic sons of Isaac. All right. Because the truth be said, Esau is a son of Isaac. He's just not the chosen. Because he's a son of Esau. All right, and I'm speaking about the so-called white man. The so-called white men are are sons of Abraham. They are sons of of uh, Isaac, but they're not the chosen. The chosen was 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 Jacob, and Jacob was a so-called uh, had so-called Negro features. Esau was born pale. As a matter of fact, according to the Bible, through him the the so-called he's the father of the so-called white race. They refer to themselves as white today. All right. And and all this is is being claimed through Queen Anne Boleyn, according to her. See, Anne Boleyn right here at the bottom. Let's see if I can back out so you can see it. And Sir Walter Riley. But instead of so it says, right, Anne, Anne Boleyn and Sir Walter Riley and Joseph. And then um, that makes him uh, Sir Walter Riley, the grandfather. And then you got this Gregory Hallett guy, you know, 10 times over. But. There, they were also going through this Anne Boleyn's line. Well, look, a woman doesn't have a line. A woman is of a line. She is of her father's line, all right. And if there are no brothers or no uncles of uh, um, in her uh, her father's side in her line, she, uh, in, in the line that she came from, then that line ends. It's point blank period. So let's get some scriptures to substantiate that as we go forth before all the evidences are. Provided. So the first one is going to be uh, in Chronicles. This is a uh, no. I'm not in Chronicles. Let me go back. Chronicles, uh, Second Chronicles, thirty-one, verses seventeen and eighteen, and it reads: Both the genealogy of the priests by the house of their fathers and the Levites from the twenty years old and upward. In their charges, in their poles, and the genealogy of all the little ones, their wives and their sons and their daughters, through all the congregation, for in their set office, they sanctified themselves holiness. So the Levites determine their race, their nationality through their fathers, not through their mothers, like the uh, like the Jewish people say, the Ishes. All right. They they claim that you are uh, Israelite through you. if your mother's a Jew then you're a Jew and that's not true. That's a complete and total lie. If your father's a Jew then you are a Jew, okay? And it and you can't apply. It's like you got Israelite sex out there that use that that word ignorantly, mamzer. All right. It does not matter what your father what your mother is. It's your father that determines your nationality. Evidence of that 
is, is the sons of Joseph. They were considered Israelites. They became tribes. And their mother was a Hamite. All right. King David's uh, uh, great grandmother, I mean, a uh, grandmother was a Moabite. Okay. And there are other great Israelites that, that, that were uh, in the kingly line who had heathen mothers. All right, so you can't so to, to so to use the word mamzer improperly. A mamzer correctly would be someone who has an Israelite mother and a heathen father. All right, because a man determines the nationality of a child. Point blank. Period. The the woman is the vessel that just brings forth that brings forth that man's seed. Next scripture, Numbers one and eighteen, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, the family, the race of their fathers. That's what house means. According to the number of the names from the 20 years old and upward by their poles. So your pedigree is your, your race, your identity, who you are. Okay. So uh, let's let her talk until we get about to the, about to the, uh, about another 30 seconds or so. So let's go. Anne Boleyn, Sir Walter Raleigh, ten times grandma. Okay, so you got all this. It's been confirmed. The Queen and the Pope certified that the execution was faked and both bred posthumously, resulting in G. Hallett, the main S.Y.Y. King of England. We have a new king! Okay, now you guys, I'm going to show you how I know all the rest of this too. I'm going to break some more down. So she's excited about a new king. Look, the only new kings, the only kings that are going to be set up is Yahawashai, who was the king of kings, and then King David, who's, who's, who was given the, uh, uh, the keys to the kingdom. All right. King David is going to, to, to sit on the thrones of the, uh, of the 12 tribes of Israel forever, thus say of the Bible. All right. Let's get a scripture to substantiate that. All right. Because the nation of Israel that's also another way you know that the people in the land are imposters because the Israelites do not go back to Israel until King David sits on the throne again. Not before. Anyone saying it is a liar and not fitting prophecy and not going according to the Bible. All right. So this is. Uh, what am I going to? Hosea. All right. I believe it's Hosea three and five. Right, and this is Hosea 3 and 5, and it reads, After shall the children of Israel, Salakia, after shall the children of Israel return, see them, when they return, and seek Yahweh their power, and David their king, and shall fear Yahweh and his goodness in the latter days. All right? So King David um, regains the throne. All right. And right now we're seeking after the Lord. We're seeking after our power and we're, we're waiting for our king. Both of them, the king of kings and, and King David, who's king over Israel forever. Thus saith the Lord. All right. Not me. And so the only the only true king, uh, uh, because by saying that he's the king over there in England, Scotland and Ireland, you're saying he, he's the he's the king of Israel, basically, because. The real Irish Scotless, the real Scots Irish, and 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 uh, and the uh, English, the Brits, were all Israelites. All right, they were the angelic sons of, of, of Ireland. So when you're making all these movies, the Vikings and and all that stuff, none, those were not so-called white people that were in those lands. All right, that were fighting um, with with the Brits, the Scots, and the Ireland. The, those were all the tribes of Jacob, man. Those were Israelites. Okay? And that's too many relics and evidences to prove that. You just choose not to present them. All right? Because you whitewashed everything during the Renaissance. Okay, so let's shoot up to the... Uh, to about the 13-minute uh, mark. And about 50 seconds. So I'm at 1347. I'll let it play there. And the name of this video, if I didn't say it in the Without beginning, is uh, Meet the New King of England. All right.
Who? Let's meet Joseph Gregory Hallett. So he's saying it's this Joe. John the Third. He's saying this this Joseph Gregory Joseph Hallett. Hallett man, <laughs> supposedly, this guy on the bottom, this red this red guy, all right, is the new king. This is the king, the true king of uh, of I I Ireland, Scotland, and Britain. Britain, okay. Where did King John the Third come from? Well, we had um, King John of England, who's my ancestor. He's my great times twenty-two grandfather. Okay. And then we had Prince Marcos Manuel, who's I, I can't even. All right, so uh, let's let's get some scriptures to 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 kill some lies, man. All right, the first scripture is going to be uh, ones that I love. I love the ones in Lamentation. I'm also going to go to the Song of Solomon. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go to the Song of Solomon first. Let's go to the Song of Solomon. That's Psalms. Yeah, this is the Song of Solomon, uh, verses 1 and 5. And it reads, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. And I've heard all kinds of uh, uh, backlash to the scripture as to what that means, that, 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 uh, um, that the daughters were, no, that the women were saying this. This was Solomon's. That's why it says in verse 1, the songs of Solomon, which is Solomon. So Solomon is telling you that he was black, all right, and which really meant he was uh, Kadar. He was dark skinned, more brown, dark brown is really what it means. So, and let's prove that, all right, let's go and let's go to jump to... Uh, to uh, Jeremiah 14th chapter, all right, and it reads, 14 and 2, and it reads, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish, they are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. So when it says black in, in, in that scripture, all right, it's telling you that they are Kadar, that they are, that's a Hebrew word, Kadar, which means dark skinned, okay? So going back to Song of Solomon, let's go to Song of Solomon, 5 and 11 and it, and it reads his head is as most fine gold his locks meaning his braids is usually to when you look up that word locks it's going to give you a word the word plait which means three three straight uh, st uh, strands of hair that are braided together all right not a dreadlock that's not a custom of the Israelites it was a it was a plait a braid Samson had seven braids all right and it says, uh, uh, his head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. All right. So he had dark, bushy locks. All right. And if you pull the un unbraided those locks, it will be a dark, bushy afro, so-called a dark, a dark fro. All right. I was watching, uh, uh the, uh, the last, uh, the, uh, the last kingdom. Which is a really good series on Netflix. Um, I suggest you watch it. It, it really is. It, 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 you can reference the Bible in every episode over and over again. But one of the things that it, it showed that a woman that hair, whose hair was uh, unlocked was evidence that she was unwed, that she was single, right? Not a ring, all right? It wasn't about a ring. It was all about her hair, all right? So the women who wear their hair, their hair in locks, and they weren't wearing dreadlocks they were wearing them braided women who would they have a braid in their hair was 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 showed was to show that they were um that they were married or or they were um betrothed all right it shows you that in that show all right so let's get us some more uh scriptural evidence let's go to lamentation um and this is lamentation four and eight and it reads their visage is blacker then a cold. They are not known in the streets. Why? Because they're called Negroes and blacks. Niggers. Alright? When we're speaking about, the, particularly about the tribe of, of Judah or the three tribes that made up the kingdom of Judah. Which was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Their visage is blacker than a cold. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. So all of a sudden when you say someone is black in the police report on the police radio or scanner, but all of a sudden you read the Bible and it says that their skin is black. They're not really black. You people are so full of shit. 
All right. All right. This is uh so so full of it. When you open your mouth, it falls from it. This is uh Lamentation five and and and, and uh. And eight, and it reads once. Uh, no, five and ten. Our skin was black, like the oven. All right, you ever seen how dark an oven get after you? Come on, man. So they were really, really dark. So once again, when it says our skin is black in the Bible, all of a sudden, you know, or if it says our skin is black in a novel, it means that. But when you read it in the Bible, it doesn't. You people are just. All right. So let's get out some. Um some picture of evidence now because what happened was there was a man by the name of Oliver Cromwell Oliver and Thomas Cromwell and uh, what they were doing was removing the, uh, the, the dark people of Israel you know the Israelites from Ireland and Scotland and sending them into to America and, and, and to the islands to serve slavery including the ones that look pale but they had uh, black forefathers their fathers were so called black men alright um, this is from this book the Negro question the missing link you can clearly see that these that's King James and that's Charles to the left and I believe that's Charles II on the bottom right there that's, that's on the screen now and whose nickname was Baby Boy. And the statues of him over there, they've removed, they knocked off the wide nose and the lips off. All right. To try and uh, uh, hide that fact. But um, this is on page 36 and it reads, The Massacre of Drogheda, English. And this is written in Old English, old English so please forgive me if I... Uh, say some of the words wrong I can't even read that one is written so funny uh, English pro pro uh stripped naked and and burned into the into the mountaineer in the froth in the snow who many hundreds were were are perished to death so they stripped them and driven them into the snow naked basically uh, many Lent, uh, uh dead in, in, in ditches, many lie, lying dead in ditches. Savages up built, uh, upbraided them, uh, frame. Now, you wild, it's hard to read that because it's written in really, you know, fancy font. So, Salakia, and it says, Irish history, I and this, and so it getting that. What I love about this book is it gives you the sources where the information is coming from. Irish History, Ireland Library, 1641 Rebellion. It is the scene of destruction of Drogheda Island by, by English six. And, and there's the image. You can see the way it's written, why it's so difficult to read. All right. You can read every other word. But the, yes, yeah, the Irish History of the Irish Rebellion. So I'm going to read that now. And it says uh, the scene from the destruction of, of Drogheda Ireland by the English in 1641. Now these weren't the real English. These were the the people who were calling themselves English, the people on the screen. Because just like like Esau took over Greece, it took and and, and pushed the brown skin uh, uh Etruscans out and the brown skin uh, uh Europeans and then started calling themselves Greeks. Okay? It's the same thing all over again. This is the scene of destruction of Drogheda Hitter in Ireland. By the English in 1641, they stripped the people naked and drove them into the mountains to freeze to death, but, but not before uttering strange statement to the English being wild men. Remember, the Irish were black in 1600. The English impaled the Irish children and bashed their heads on stones. These are eyewitness accounts, and they have old art from them doing it. They were impaling the children. And then bashing their heads on the stones to kill them. You see the woman begging for their lives. Then I'm going to read uh, one one quick thing. All right. Because I, I'm running out of time here. But it, this is from, from Professor Winchell Alexander. This is at the beginning of the book, Sources of Information. Professor Winchell Alexander, our remote ancestry, 1815 to 1900 collection of journals. These short black men came from Atlantis, northern Africa. They overran Europe and they were known as the Britons. 
All right. Another one more. The Roman historian Tacitus, the orange, the origin of the Black Britons. The Iberians are black people with curly hair. And Anthropological Review Society, London, Volume Eight. All right. So, and it's just, and, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, I can read them all, but I'm afraid that I'm gonna run out of uh, space here on, on on my camera. So, with that, all praise is going and honor be unto you. How about you? How about shy? Wa ba ba ba. Shalom.